Hey you guys, it's Brit. Tonight we're here to talk about Brittany Dawn and her husband Jordan recently becoming foster parents. And they do have a young child, a little sweet baby infant in their care. I did have some thoughts and I wanted to discuss this also because tons of y'all have been talking to me on Instagram. So I figured it would just be a good night to sit down, make a video. We can talk about it. So if you're interested, please keep watching. All right, you guys, so first things first, y'all know all about Brittany Dawn. If you don't, I'll link some other videos down below so you can catch up if you're interested. But she is essentially a um, scamming influencer who used to do fitness type content. She got sued by the state of Texas. She is married to a former police officer who was sued by the ACLU and fired for um, using excessive force on a black man that he was attempting to put under arrest, which as a reminder, when you're getting put under arrest, it shouldn't mean that your life is in danger or you end up with a broken arm or a you know broken jaw or head trauma. That's just not the way that, um, you know, police officers should be taking people into custody. And I know that it happens all the time. This guy was behind one of those many times. And um, on top of all of that, he's also a dog mark. Since their time of using excessive force, scamming people and murdering dogs, they've also made it very clear that they are both Bible thumping, Christian influencers, especially Brittany. She makes it very well known. And I'm sure most of y'all know how I feel about this. But as a reminder, I'm here for all of that. If that's what you are, and that's truly who you are in your heart, that's great. But once you start adding a price tag to it and doing things like retreats and offering to baptize people and you're constantly proselytizing to your followers, that's where I have a big problem with it. And especially when it's used as a shield. And Brittany Dawn has used her uh, religion as a shield. Nikki uh, Filippi has used her religion as a shield. There's many different Christian influencers that use this as a shield. Sam and Nia are another example. And I don't like it. Just because you're Christian, that doesn't mean that it's okay to murder your dog or to scam people or to use excessive force when you're putting someone under arrest. One other thing that she did that I've covered is the fact that she exploited a poor homeless guy, collected a bunch of money through GoFundMe, and then never mentioned it again. So um, I also thought that was another interesting thing, and I think that also ties in with her being a scammer and being a really crooked business person. So aside from her being sued by the state of Texas and kind of all of that quick backstory that I went over, even though I said I wasn't going to, she recently announced that she and her husband were approved to become foster parents in the state of Texas. And I know that she also recently went through some issues with her own pregnancy. I'm not here to talk about that. It's not mine to give commentary on, so I'm not going to go into the details. If you're interested in that, you can go check her Instagram. It's all over there. She's made it very public, but I'm not going to give a commentary on that because it's not my story to give an opinion on. But let's talk about the foster parent thing. On November 15th, she shares this photo, and I'll throw it right here as always, and she says, one minute you're grieving heartbreak and the loss of a miscarriage, and next you're giving a stroller you're getting a stroller ready for your first foster child. Whatever this next chapter holds, Lord, we know you're in it. Everything has Jesus, Lord, the Bible, or some kind of Bible verse inserted right into the middle of it. She cannot just say something and it not be tied back to Christianity and utilizing her uh, religion to remind everybody how holy 
she is. If you fast forward just a couple days on November 21st, she shared that um, a post that said, my vehicle officially has a car seat as of today. A little moment that I knew would happen in this car at some point, and now all of the emotions are setting in. Here we go. And this is all happening very, very quickly in my personal opinion. Then on November 30th, remember this date. November 30th, she shared the part of our story where we transition from, quote, two kids in love to legal foster parents in the state of Texas. Big emotions today, even bigger victories. Now we patiently wait for our caseworker's phone call. This woman was putting a car seat in her car, buying all the cute baby stuff, and they weren't even approved as legal foster parents, you know, signing documents. Like it, the ink wasn't even on the paper. And she, of course, wanted to use the opportunity to shop and spend a bunch of money. Now, the past couple of days is where things really started to unfold. Just yesterday, she shared the announcement that came home from our trip, they were in Colorado, and our world flipped upside down with one phone call. We are officially foster parents. And obviously she had to share this with Instagram because what is life if you're not putting it on Instagram? Before I get into kind of my opinions about her specifically being a foster parent, I wanna talk about fostering in general. Because I talked, about Alicia Doherty, Micah Stauffer. Um, I, I want to take this opportunity to remind everybody that I have nothing wrong with people fostering children. I think that fostering is amazing. I think going, you know, if you go the IVF route, if you uh, adopt, if you do kinship, whatever it is, I think it's fantastic. But not everybody has it in them to be parents. And some of y'all might get mad at me for saying this, but I heard something a very long time ago, and it was, if you want to know what kind of parent someone is going to be, give them a dog. Because believe it or not, anyone who doesn't own a dog and wants to say how crazy I am, dogs are very time consuming, they're very expensive, they require a ton of attention. Like, um, you know, I know that some people get cats because they're a little less maintenance. I think they're a lot less maintenance because you don't have to think about making sure that they have bathroom breaks, making sure that they are, um, you know, fully engaged and they're not home for too long without having a walk or anything like that. Like, Dogs are not able to really survive for, like, I couldn't leave Axel home for a, a weekend trip and have an automatic food timer thing set up and know that he would be okay. I know a lot of people, when they travel, they will go away for an overnight trip and they'll just leave their cat with an automatic food timer and that's their decision to make. Can't do that with a dog. Impossible, not going to work it's not going to work for anybody, for you or for the dog. So I know that that might upset some people to even try to make that comparison, but in some ways it is true because dogs take so much time and so much, they just need a lot. And it's a really amazing feeling to be able to give that to them. Now, here's the thing. I am not super familiar with the fostering process in Texas. Something that I have understood is that becoming properly qualified to be foster parents is a very long process. It's not something where you just apply, they do a background check, and you sign papers and you get a baby. There are so many, um, I guess you could say hoops to jump through, but it's actually good that all of these hoops are laid out for people who want to become foster parents. The thing that I consider when I'm looking at um, this Brittany Dawn situation is it's two things. It's how did things happen so quickly and they're being done the right way? And secondly, 
my opinion is that she is not doing this for pure reasons. She is doing this as a way to um, be a white savior. And I know that I've used that term on Alicia Dougherty. I definitely think that Brittany Dawn has a white savior complex. And if you look at the things that she's been posting on Instagram just today, I've been kind of following along on her stories. Her stories are just completely ridiculous. So let's go over to her Instagram. She immediately goes into how tired they are and how rewarding this is. It's literally been maybe 48 hours literally 48 hours and you're already coming out with the religious nonsense over sharing about this child and we'll get into that in one second and making sure that she is posting photos and videos all day long all over Instagram. Now I know that you with foster kids <clears throat> you can't just like put a foster kid's face on social media, but she's still oversharing in a lot of ways where sure, she's not showing the child's face or saying the child's name, but you're still oversharing to the degree where it's uncomfortable for me to watch as a viewer. It's an honor to foster this child in this season of its precious life. It's a blessing to be able to pour love over this child as we pray and contend for restoration to happen. It's a vulnerable season to give so much love knowing that the door could close with a difficult goodbye at any moment. And she goes on to talk about the kingdom. I'm not here to just recite the BS that she's putting out here. But um, then she announces that she's going to put up on YouTube talking about her situation with her pregnancy. And this post that she shared, I really did not like because essentially what she's done is she's not only overshared about the birth mother, but she has also overshared about what this child is experiencing as far as medical symptoms. She wants everybody to know that this child is the child of someone who is addicted to drugs and was using drugs during their pregnancy and had their child taken from them so that Brittany Dawn could just save the child and be the saving grace and all of the, you know, artificial stuff that she has been putting out is going to just make the life, make life so much better for this child, take it away from its evil mother who, you know, was using during pregnancy and I'm here to save the day. Imagine if you were the birth mother of this child. Situations like these where someone is oversharing on your behalf and you are fresh out of literally having a baby, this is literally an infant, taking into consideration things like postpartum depression and maybe other things that were going on before the pregnancy, other mental health issues, also dealing with being an active addiction. Um, and you have this Christian influencer blasting information about your child on her social media page. Things like this could literally send someone over the edge. Having this shared while this mother is in such a fragile position could literally send her over the edge. The idea of foster parents is to come together with bio parents and hopefully be able to have this child uh, reunited with the birth parents. And correct me if I'm wrong, but that's my understanding of most foster situations. It's to help the birth parents um, get back on their feet and conquer what it is that they're going through so that they can regain custody full time of their child. It, it's not for some influencer to come take your kid and then overshare about not only what you're going through, but also what the child is going through. And think about the guilt that this mother could be 
feeling reading this on the other side of the screen because you know, you know, chances are like you can come across Instagram very easily, let's be honest. And this is also not a situation where the birth mother has no clue who has her child. She's met Brittany Dawn. Later in the Instagram story, she says how they spent time with the bio mom and so the mom knows who Brittany Dawn is. Do you really think that she's not sitting on social media seeing some of this stuff? And instead of protecting the child and actually fostering the child like she, quote, wants to do, she's posting on Instagram every couple hours and making sure that everything is an aesthetic and, you know, Bible verses and beige decor like that's all that her Instagram story is she also shared on her Instagram how she, I guess she wanted to have kind of like a relatable moment so she shared that oh I didn't brush my teeth today so we're driving to the doctor's appointment I'm sitting in the back seat with a little one and I just had a realization that I forgot to brush my teeth this morning Those are things that I never would have done. Like literally, babe, I never would have forgotten to brush my teeth. Nope. Ever. Like that is like the first thing I do, but like everything is so shaken up right now. have a question because you have a full face of makeup on lashes on makeup on but you didn't brush your teeth mm, seems like you're trying a little too hard to be relatable and I think she did and she's just using this as one of those I'm so relatable moments she also shared that they took the child to a doctor's appointment and wanted to make sure that Jordan gets this little video of her pushing the stroller with her cute little backpack and everything is just, it's, it's supposed to be this perfect aesthetic, but she's also trying to pepper in things like, I haven't brushed my hair. I haven't brushed my teeth. I'm not sleeping. We're having such a hard time. We're taking five minute cat naps, you know, on the couch with the baby. It's just, it, it's too artificial for me. It is full of savior complex. It is full of fake BS, in my opinion. I don't think that someone that takes advantage of other people that are in bad positions, like she took advantage of people who were struggling with their bodies when she ran that scam. I don't personally believe that people like that are nurturing. And I think that you have to be nurturing in order to foster children. That needs to be like one of your top three DNA makeups has to be that you're nurturing. I don't like that she's using this child in what my opinion is a way to build her following and venture into mommy vlogging and, you know, foster moms on social media. I think that she, just like she did with the fitness influencer thing, she's done it with the Christian influencer thing. She's tried to do it with the, you know, being a dog mom. And I think now she's trying to do the mommy vlogger thing. And I said this maybe a year ago that she was probably going to end up venturing into family vlogging because that's just the, the one place on the internet where people might not know a whole lot about her. She can also get a lot of views because people are really interested in kids. We talk about this all the time. I don't know what anyone was thinking by approving this application and giving them a child so soon. It seems rushed. It seems artificial. It seems like it has a white savior and Bible verses all over it. And that's my opinion. And as I said before, I have no issue. Hey, if you're um, Christian or, you know, if you're not religious at all, whatever it is that you are, I am here for that. I am just not here 
for the way that Brittany Dawn utilizes her religion to gain favor with her audience. I think it's gross. So either way, I did want to make this little update for you guys. If you're interested, I can maybe make a part two and see what goes on over the next couple of days, maybe see what happens over the weekend with this. But I really hope this child, um, you know, is in the best place that they can be. And that's what I will say for now. So either way, you know, Brittany Dawn, you scammy little scammer. Being a foster mom is just not about like a beige aesthetic and posting stuff on Instagram and claiming that you forgot to brush your teeth, even though you have a full face of makeup on and lashes on. Like, pull it together, girl. Either way, for now, if you like the video, please leave a like and a comment. And if you'd like to see more from me in the future, please subscribe. I'll see you guys soon. Bye.